Max Crosby comes out and says, basically, <sighs> if you don't bring in Antonio Pierce as the head coach, I, w- I will most certainly, most likely want to, you know, look into what the trade possibilities are um, for for himself. Those are some strong words. That's a strong endorsement. AP has gotten a lot of strong endorsements. How do you guys see this playing out? If the Raiders are smart, Mark Davis is smart, you do your due diligence. You you go talk to Harbaugh and wh- whomever else you want to talk to. But ultimately, Antonio Pierce should and needs to be the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. It's a no-brainer. The way that locker room rallied around him when he became the head coach, the way that defense just took a jump, you give him a quarterback with what they have on offense, that offensive line, the skilled players, that defense, they're a threat to anybody. And and so I, I don't understand. I don't think people understand as a player, when you have a coach that you believe in, that you don't want to disappoint the way you prepare, the way you give it your, and it's like, oh, you should be doing that. You get paid for it. it, It's it's just some, it's just different when you don't want to disappoint a coach, when you want to play for the coach, you want to play for your team. It's just a different vibe when you go into that meeting room on Wednesday and you look forward to what the head coach is about to say. And I don't think people understand that when a coach is giving you a message, how you receive it when you believe in them. Mm -hmm. Man, I had a chance to, uh, you know, go to Vegas last week and attend the last game against the Raiders and the Broncos, man, and just getting the chance to, you know, see AP and to to move around a little bit and and just to to get a sense of the vibe within the building. Got a chance to sit down with some of the players, man. And uh, it's it's a different – energy in that building obviously i've never been a part of a radio organization but you can just sense and feel the freedom and what he gives the players and when i say the freedom to be who they are as young men and as professionals and as football players they give that back to him because they are he is putting the trust in them to be professional about their job so it goes both ways and just to be around it and the way that the players take to him and you have the guys like Devontae Adams and now Max Crosby those guys coming out and saying being very vocal about their future with his organization if he does not come back to be the head coach I think it sends a big message to Mark Davis who is the GM uh, I mean the uh, the owner got a chance to meet Kelly the, the general manager and you can just – you don't want to go come into a new season with all this turmoil, especially a guy of a magnitude like a Max Crosby, who was obviously one of the best edge rushers in all of football, coming into a new season where now you have all of these things, all these distractions to deal with outside of football because you didn't make the right hire. And you don't want to lose a Max Crosby, trust me, because there are not any more players out there like him. But I'll say this, man, I I just think that uh, Mark Davis, he feels it, and he is leading this organization and this team into the right direction. And I had a chance to talk to Devontae Adams, and he said to me, he said, man, could you imagine where we would be at as a football team if we had him for an entire year? So the players understand that. So I I got got the feeling that AP is going to get this job and he's going to turn this whole Raiders organization around. Bill Belichick does leave. You could give me your opinions on, on that. And what are what's your takeaway with Gerard Mayo uh, be, becoming the new head coach of the Patriots? You know, for me, any time a former player can get a head coaching position, I'm all for it because a lot of times we looked at as if we can just play the game. Oh, they're just really good. We don't have the mental capacity to coach as a head coach. We can be a position coach, but we we can't lead a team full of men. And so anytime a former player gets that opportunity, I'm happy for him. Man, it's going to be an uphill battle, though, with that being said. 
Mm. That, that team, that mm. roster, it's an uphill battle. And so – if he wins there and he turns that around within the next two to three years, wow, because the Patriots are awful. The drafting, I mean, when is the last time, and I can't recall it, just, I'm just thinking about this now. Let's go back to the, let's just say the last five or six drafts. You tell me when the Patriots have signed a top third, uh, first, second, or third round pick to a second contract. I, I, can, I can't recall. I cannot Neither. recall. Anybody being drafted in the top three rounds being signed to a second contract. And when you're not signing the guys you draft to a second contract, that means you are drafting terribly bad. You know what? Um, I really believe that Gerard Mayo can turn this whole thing around in New England, and, hit, and this is the reason why. You said you just said we, we're, uh, you know, we're all four former players getting head coaching jobs, and I think that we are starting to see the shift and the culture of this generation of players, owners recognizing that they need coaches to be able to relate. It's a great to point, these, Plexico to these Players, you, you, you look at the, you look at D'Amico Ryan's, you look at AP out there, in, in Los Angeles, and now Gerard Mayo Vegas. taking over in New England and Vegas. So I think that's what we're starting to see because right now, these younger kids, they are not, you know, what. We were when we came into the league with the, you know, obviously Andy Reid is still coaching, you know, the Bill Cowers and the Tom Coughlins and, you know, now the, now the Bill Belichick. The shift is changing in the NFL be, because of the players and the owners have recognized that. And I think from, you, know, you look at D'Amico, you look at Antonio, and now you look at G G uh, uh, Gerard, Mayo. Gerard Mayo, all being captains and at the linebacker position, being play callers on their defense and being highly intelligent and knowledgeable of the scheme and defense that they want to play. With that being said, as being a player and now being a, a head coach, you know exactly what you need on your team defensively and offensively if you want to compete and win football games. So I think that's the reason why you are starting to see these owners going after former players because now they can relate to the game. They can go upstairs and say, you know what, I need this kind of player at corner or defense end or wide receiver or running back if I want to run the, the, the scheme and the kind of team that I want to run. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. Even though – I was highly surprised with the firing of Mike Vrabel. I played with Vrabel for seven years in Pittsburgh. You're talking about a man who took the Tennessee Titans to the playoffs uh, uh, the last two years, and he doesn't make it to the playoffs this year. He gets fired. That was one that was surprising to me. But Mike Vrabel will be hired in a New York minute because he's a, he's a great head coach and also a former player. So you're looking at all these former players getting jobs, and I credit that to the, all the young players coming in and we're starting to see a, a change in the generation of player. Mike Vrabel, also a, a former LB. Shouts out to the LBs in the world, man. We just some different people, man. We're, we're just different, <laughs> oh, you know. God. We just handle <laughs> things differently. We did no, not. Hey, but uh, my, that was kind of the first thing I thought was we are in a day and age where this, this generation of, of athlete. Uh, they're more empowered than us. I mean, let's just be honest. Let's be real about it. Yep. If if you want to say to me that I'm not going to play for you, then fine. I won't play for you. And 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 that in our day would have mortified us. Like I can't stand this. Some some of them can't stand him. But I'm going to get my thug on because I got to play. I got to make it happen, and I got to be a part of this team, and I got to be trying to get on this field, and I got to be getting them chips. That's how we used to think. And we would deal with guys that had rigid ways of handling things that, that could you, you knew in a second, in a second, this is the type of person that is only looking out for their own best interest as it applies to coaching. They ain't coaching because they love you. They're not coaching because they want to make sure that your level of life and living in, in life is at a high level of, of, you know, being prepared and confidence that you can be something more than just a football player. That isn't what these old school coaches was on. Some of them, yes, and they were and they were lauded and they were praised for that. 
You know, I think of something like I think of my coach in college. I think of Joe. I, I think of Bobby Bowden. I think of uh, Coach Robinson at Grambling. Like you hear the guys that really, really love their their players. But when you start thinking about all these other coaches, man, they'll sell you out so quickly. They, and and I mean, quick, quick, and discard you and disregard you. And that was something that we had to deal with. This generation of kids, this generation of athletes, they ain't going for it. Like, I'll do something different. I'll go play video games and, and, and make money that. I'll go be an influencer. I'll, I'll, I'll go into a different industry, like whatever it may be. And it ain't just rap anymore. <laughs> it ain't just right. singing rap in sports anymore. For those who may be ignorant enough to think that the people that – do athletics can only do rapping singing and selling and selling drugs and playing sports like that's not that's not this generation this generation and they're pro ga- programming games they're they're creating new apps they're 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 making cars that drive by themselves like technology this technology boom has been crazy and not to get too far off the rails but these young cats ain't going for that so the moment that they they come across somebody that they know can relate to them like oh man he speaks my language oh he really cares you know one of the major reasons why i think gerard mayo has a strong chance of changing it is because those guys will believe if gerard mayo believes that they can win you're going to feel that i can we can win we can do this together not we're winning for gerard mayo not it's gerard mayo's way or no way or the highway or i'll right. send you home and you're fired i i just think that <laughs> yeah. It, you know what I mean? And that's how coaches have coached. That's Those how coaches over. have coached. Those you know, over. 